Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Welcome, Smart Search clients and guests, to the Smart Search Best Practices webinar, Aligning Talent Strategy to a Company-Wide Business Strategy, presented by our special guest, Andy Rice. Prior to establishing Black Box Consulting, Andy developed an extensive background in business process management, talent management, and human resources. He's held roles as practice manager for integrated talent management and principal consultant at the Newman Group, a division of Corn Ferry International, senior project manager at Yahoo Resumix, staffing director at Genentech, and regional HR director of Viant, a global internet and business consulting group. He also has an extensive background in talent acquisition, learning and development, performance management, leadership development, succession planning, compensation, workforce planning, and employee relations. My name is Cindy Travella. I'm the manager of marketing at Smart Search and your master of ceremonies for today's presentation. Also joining us is my Smart Search colleague, Sylvia Dalby, who will be monitoring the questions along with Andy during the presentation. Good morning, Sylvia, and welcome. Good morning, Cindy. Thank you. You're welcome. So in regards to questions, Andy will answer them during the presentation, and any questions left unanswered during the presentation will be addressed later offline via personal email you'll see a question box on the control panel, and we'll be monitoring this. So you're welcome to type in your questions th throughout the presentation, and you can do so by keying them directly into that box. Now, before we get started, uh, there's a few other housekeeping tasks I'd like to cover. So calling your attention to the GoToWebinar control panel, you'll see a chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. If you experience any technical difficulties, you can alert me via the chat box. However, if you're experiencing problems with hearing the presentation or seeing the slides, I recommend exiting out and re-entering the presentation. That tends to solve the audio and visual problems. You'll also note there's a little arrow on the control panel that points to the right. Clicking this arrow will minimize the control panel so you can better see the entirety of the slides. And for the best viewing, we recommend you ma maximize your screen. You can also drag and drop the chat box and question box from the control panel if you wish. And that will remove from the control panel section prior to minimizing it. The presentation slides are going to be available to everyone today who's in attendance, and additional information will be sent to all of you on how to obtain a copy. Also, we'll be tweeting comments during the webinar, so if you wish to follow along there or participate with updates, please use the hashtag, hashtag SmartSearchATS. During today's webinar, Andy will be discussing the components of a talent strategy the framework for developing an integrated talent management initiative, how you can perform a talent strategy alignment and discipline review, and how talent acquisition can benefit from a talent strategy alignment. So without further ado, it is my extreme pleasure to hand off the controls to our special guest presenter, Andy Rice. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Aligning Talent Strategy to Company-Wide Business Strategy. I also wanted to start by thanking Smart Search for giving me this opportunity to um, talk about talent strategy. It's one of my, one of my favorite things. So, uh, and thank you for that introduction. Um, as, as we talked about, we're, I just wanted to start with the learning objectives for today. Um, uh, in this webinar, we're going to be talking about uh, the components of a talent strategy. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the integrated talent management framework that Black Box Consulting uses, as it is um, uh, talent strategy alignment is a, is a part of that framework. We'll talk about the process for performing a talent strategy alignment specifically, uh, including both aligning strategy to business strategy and a talent management dis discipline review 
which is how you take the talent strategy alignment and actually uh, bring it to life in your organization. And then we'll talk about what the benefits are to talent acquisition, um, both internal in-house recruiters and agency recruiters of a company performing a talent strategy alignment. So as, as we said earlier, feel free to ask questions during the presentation uh, through the question box. Uh, and uh, I'll be fielding them along the way. If we started to run into a bit of a time crunch of getting through the materials, I may ask to suppress those questions, uh, additional questions and answer them offline afterwards in email. So let's go ahead and start just talking a little bit about what a talent strategy is. I've talked to many, many different companies uh, about talent strategies um, from 350-person uh, energy companies in, in uh, um, uh, Canada to DuPont. And interestingly enough, all of them have a slightly different definition of what talent strategy is. So I wanted to start by giving our definition of a talent strategy, what it is and why it's important, uh, and then we can talk about how to get you there. So really what a talent strategy is, is it's a statement of operating principles. So really, it, it, it allows a company and an HR department to say, when it comes to talent, this is our mission, this is what we want to be and what we want to accomplish. These are our talent strategies, which are the mechanisms by which we're going to achieve that mission. And then the talent priorities, which are given those strategies, what does each area of talent management need to focus on in order to execute on those talent strategies? Um, what it, the reason it's important, um, I hear all the time people saying, why do I need a talent strategy? Isn't that just high level mumbo jumbo and how, how will it really help me? Well, w without a talent strategy, your entire talent management function and your HR function are really just reacting. It's a very reactive uh, uh, place to be because instead of saying, this is what we need to do and this is how we're going to do it, all you're doing is waiting for the business to say, we need to hire someone or we need to develop someone or we need someone to succeed me instead of having a proactive and strategic approach to talent management. So what it really provides is team focus. So you have a limited size of team for talent management. What a talent strategy does is it allows them to focus on the areas that have the highest impact on the business strategy, rather than just reacting to whatever is on fire that day. It provides a linkage to corporate strategy. So rather than being a talent management function that asks, tell me what you want from the business, you're instead asking, tell me what you're trying to achieve and let me help you decide what you need from a talent perspective. It provides clear priorities for the HR function so that people are focused on the right things and the high priority things. It provides an internal brand. It actually allows an HR function and a talent management function to brand itself with its client, which is the business. Um, and finally, and, and, and most importantly, your talent strategy is really the foundation for a detailed talent plan, allowing you to determine how you're going to, to, to acquire and develop the talent that you need in order to make the business successful. In the final analysis, this talent strategy, as much as people sometimes think it's unnecessary, is absolutely essential for taking a talent management function and an HR function from being reactive and tactical, which is really just responding to the hot thing of the moment, to a proactive and strategic one, where you're acting as a strategic business partner and strategic advisors to your clients. So really, I wanted to talk a little bit about a strategic talent mindset and why it's important. Because this talent strategy and talent strategy alignment is really the first step in an organization having a strategic talent mindset. So let's start from corporate strategy. Every company has a corporate strategy. Many of them, it's explicit. They're somewhere documented. Here are the five strategic initiatives that we're embarking on for the next three to five years. In some cases, it's more implicit or division by division. 
but every company has some sort of strategy for moving forward and meeting its business target targets amidst the competition that it's facing. So when you think of this corporate strategy and how it gets developed, um, I don't know of a single CEO uh, who is running a company who would try to do corporate business planning or corporate strategic planning without uh, someone from finance, usually their CFO, someone from sales and marketing, usually their CMO, and someone from operations, usually their COO. So those people get together and the CEO of the company says, here are the five things we think we want to achieve in the next three to five years. And usually there's some interactive discussion about that. The CFO will go run financial models and she might say, I'm sorry, John, the CEO, but we can't afford to meet those corporate goals. Um, so we're going to have to try to dial back some of those corporate strategies um, or we won't be able to meet our financial targets. Or the CMO will say, well, that's a great strategy to sell product, John, but we, there's no way we're going to be able to market that into the market that we're selling into um, and sell into that market in order to meet our financial targets, given our financial constraints. So we either need to change the financial plan to put more money into sales and marketing, um, or we're not going to meet our objectives. Or the COO might say, we can't operationalize that given our financial constraints. So we need to change the finance plan and put more money into operations because we're talking about strategies that require technologies that don't exist yet. And then the CEO will say, okay, either let's reduce our financial targets by spending more and putting it into operations or let's reduce our goals. So really, this, this process happens through this interactive conversation between the leadership team in finance, sales, marketing, and operations with the CEO. Now, what do you think usually happens next in most companies that don't have a strategic talent mindset? The four of those people get together, they come up with a strategy, they put it into an 80-slide PowerPoint deck, they drop it on the CHRO's desk and say, okay, CHRO, now go find the talent to make this happen. Well, if you think about talent as really as much of a strategic lever as finance, sales, and marketing, and operations, that CHRO should be at the same table during the business planning session. And that CHRO should be saying, John, your goals are really fantastic, but there's no way we're going to have the talent to execute on those goals unless we put more money into external curriculum with universities to develop these things that don't exist today. Or we're not going to be able to acquire that talent unless we pay more to our critical roles of engineering and sales. So we need to really adjust our finance model to allow for more money to those critical roles. So really, if you think about this, what a strategic talent mindset does is it gets HR and the CHRO a seat at the table. And the way that that CHRO can get a seat at the table is by asking questions about the business strategy. What is our business strategy and how does it influence our workforce and therefore what skills do we need? And then how do we use HR in order to develop those skills? So if you think about it, when you put talent at the table and create a strategic talent mindset, you go from reactive um, and, and um, uh, uh, tactical to proactive and strategic because you're ensuring that the business is planning in a way that they'll have the right people at the right time in the right role at the most economical cost. So much of having a talent strategy is, is about this slide, is about being able to, ins again, instead of saying, as I said earlier, what do you need for, from me business as an HR function, instead saying, what are you trying to accomplish business, and let me tell you how we can get the talent to make that happen. So I wanted to give an example of a talent strategy of a science company. Now, I know this, the, the audience here, uh, I'm assuming, is primarily talent acquisition professionals. And this is a specific example that's more across all talent management, including compensation, learning and development, succession planning, performance management, workforce planning. But it has the same concept. And the next one I'll show you will be a TA-specific one. Um, 
I also want to point out when you when we start talking about talent strategy alignment, you'll see there's a lot of detail under these talent strategies. This is really just an overarching statement of principles of the mission and strategies of the talent function. So this science company wanted to successfully support the business strategy. That's important, showing that they're trying to support a business strategy rather than just reacting by making sure it has the right right talent, right place, right time at the right cost to deliver the desired business results. That's the mission. The strategies they have committed to are that they want to develop a culture that differentiates and rewards high performance. They want to move leaders and key talent in the organization. They want to have a development culture. They want to build a sustaining culture of operational excellence. These are all the things that came out of an analysis of their business strategy that they feel they have to focus on as strategies in order to meet the need. And then they have this final statement saying, through this imp implementing this talent strategy, they'll be able to attract, develop, and retain the right talent for success. So again, this science company looked at what the business was trying to do, did a very detailed analysis of what that meant from a talent perspective, as we'll talk about later, and then summarized it in this high-level statement that allows the talent management function to focus on these areas to make sure they're supporting the business. Once that happened, each of the areas of talent management, in this case TA or recruitment, looked at those strategies and determined what their priorities were in order to meet those strategies. So you can see here this company said, they need, they, right now, they don't do sourcing, selection, and onboarding holistically, so they need to develop that strategy. They need consultation capability and sourcing capability so their TA organization isn't skilled up to be able to provide them the results that they need. They don't have an employment value proposition, so they want to develop that. Um, they want to articulate talent-centric behavior, which means the business needs to be involved more in the talent acquisition efforts. They wanted to design and launch a social media platform because they realized they wouldn't be able to reach the talent that they need unless they use social sourcing. So you can see how evaluating the business uh, goals created this mission and strategies for all of talent management. And then TA looked, looked at those and said, if those are our strategies, here's how talent acquisition can support those strategies by focusing in these areas. I wanted to give you another example. This is a talent strategy alignment that was done specifically uh, by talent acquisition by a company called DeVita, which is a healthcare company. And they came up with their recruiting mission after looking at their business strategy. We create competitive advantage through recruiting excellence ultimately reflected in clinical and financial outcomes as the provider, partner, and employer of choice. So you can see that the first phrase in this is about what recruiting needs to do in order to support the business strategy. And the second half of this is showing that the outcome is that we actually do impact the business strategy. Well, how are they going to do that? They decided that they were going to create value in this competitive advantage through five specific strategies. Best-in-class recruiters, brand differentiation, relentless sourcing. I love that one. Relent the word relentless really makes that energetic and allows them to use it as internal branding for their TA organization. Service excellence and alignment with operations. So as you can see, there are statements for each of these about what they mean in more detail so that it can be used as a marketing tool with the business to show that the business that recruiting is doing what it needs to do and to also focus the talent acquisition team on these five areas. Now what DeVita did is really fascinating because once they came up with their recruiting mission and their recruiting strategies through a talent strategy alignment, they went one step further. They said, if these five things on the left, top recruiters, brand differentiation, relentless sourcing, etc., are the five strategies that we are committing to as a recruiting function in order to support the business strategy, then we need to measure each of those areas to make sure we are achieving success in those areas. So they actually brought their strategies to life by coming up with, with these measures or metrics. For top recruiters, it's a recruiter scorecard. For relentless sources, it's time to find. For service excellence, it's surveys from managers and new hires. They actually came up with ways to measure their success in each of their strategies 
So that then they could go to the business and say, we've agreed on these strategies to meet your business objectives, and here's how we're going to show you we're achieving those strategies. So you can see, in this case, you can totally see how a talent strategy is more than just, you know, we want to solve world hunger. It's very much a way to say, as a function, this is what we want to be. These are the methods we're going to use to get there. And therefore, here are the priorities in all of the areas of talent management that will allow us to get there. So now we've talked about the components of a talent strategy. Let's talk a little bit about how we're going to get there. How do companies actually develop this talent strategy and make it sing in order to meet their business need? And that's really a two-step process. The first step in the process is called talent strategy alignment. This is really where the talent management or talent acquisition leadership team gets together, takes a very, very detailed look at their business strategies, and links them directly to talent implications. What are the implications on our talent that we need to be aware of in order to help the business meet their strategy through talent? Once you've done the talent strategy alignment and know what the talent implications of the business strategies are, then you do a talent management discipline review, which means each area of talent management will look at the results of the talent strategy alignment and use that to say, as a talent acquisition function, for example, here are our objectives, here are our key priorities, and as of today, here are our barriers to success that we need to mitigate in order to help the business meet their needs. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about talent strategy alignment uh, uh, for, from here. So Sylvia, I just want to check in. Are, are there any questions uh, at this point, or should I just keep moving on? No, we're, uh, we're doing okay. Thank you very much, Andy. And I love the term relentless sourcing. That's, uh, so far, that's <laughs> my number one takeaway. Be relentless. Yeah, I really love that one because what it does, what I found is a lot of companies do talent strategies that are, um, I, I, I'm just going to be blunt, a little milk toasty. So the beauty of something like saying relentless sourcing is that it's, it really is something to say, this is how we're going to differentiate ourselves. This is what our recruitment brand, part of our recruitment brand. It's not just good sourcing or proactive sourcing. It's relentless. It's, it's telling the story that we're always sourcing. We're always talent agents. Right, and that means so wherever, I, wherever you are, right? So, I mean, you could be at the supermarket or, you know, at the car wash, and if you're talking to people, you just never know. You're absolutely right. And, and having a talent strategy that states that makes the business know that they have to be that way and sets an expectation in your recruiting team that your recruiters and sourcers are expected to act that way as well. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about talent strategy alignment. What is it? Before we get there, I want to talk a little bit about Black Box Consulting's model for integrated talent management. Um, this is just one aspect of our model for integrated talent management that talks a lot about the stack that needs to exist in talent management and talent acquisition to have a really proactive and really strategic talent management function. So we've already talked a little bit about corporate strategy. Um, this really has to start with corporate strategy, as we saw in a prior slide. Um, I work with many, many companies, and I ask them, uh, why do you have this strategic leadership development program, for example? Or why do you have this strategic hiring program? Um, let's use the leadership development one as an example. Um, a lot of times the answer that I get is our competitors are doing it, um, so we want to do it. Or I get, I went to a SHRM conference or an ERE conference and heard about this cool program and we thought it would be cool to do it at our company. That's really, a, a, even that is a very reactive answer. Um, you're reacting to your competition. You're reacting to what, you know, is sexy in the industry. The real answer that a strategic talent management function would give there is we are trying to expand our operations into China. We are trying to move into the Chinese market. As a result, 
we have a targeted leadership development program at our company to develop the leaders in the United States so that they can then take over and drive and initiate the business in China so that we can have a bigger presence in China. And when you think about it, if a company's goal is to expand in China, that actually already implies a couple of other things about what HR needs to do. Aside from leadership development, HR needs to figure out how to expatriate those leaders to China. So immigration and, and, and relocation need to get involved to develop programs to allow for that. And you can also see a really obvious implication for talent acquisition, which is that if we're going to hire resources in China, TA needs to get educated on the Chinese labor market, on the level of competition in the Chinese labor market, on regulations in the Chinese labor market. So if you really think about it, if you are doing talent acquisition activities or talent management activities, you always want to be able to say, we're doing these because the business is trying to do X. And that's why we focused on that. That is a strategic integrated talent management function. <clears throat> So once you have the corporate strategy, the next layer down is really the talent strategy and the workforce plan. Um, we've talked a little bit about this. Those talent strategies you saw earlier explain what a talent strategy is. They're really the um, uh, um, uh, qualitative talent implications of the corporate strategy. The workforce plan is similar, except it's quantitative. So those talent strategies that say we need to focus on the Chinese labor market or we need TA to learn about the Chinese labor market, the workforce plan would say, here are the skills that we need, and here are how many we need, and here's how we're going to get them through acquisition and development and performance management and succession plan. So the strategic level of a company starts from corporate strategy, and then that determines what the talent strategies and the workforce plan are directly linked to that corporate strategy. Once you get through the talent strategy, we're at the process layer. You can see talent acquisition in the upper left, but also the other areas of talent management. The way I like to describe this is that the talent strategy and the workforce plan are really the puppet master, and then the processes are really the marionettes. So the talent strategy says, here's what we need, and then these individual disciplines in talent management, like talent acquisitions, are the one, talent acquisition are the ones that execute on that talent strategy and ensure that the business has the talent that they need. Underlying that is what I'm calling a common language, which is a competency model. I work with many, many companies that use one competency model for hiring, one competency model for leadership development. They do performance management on a completely different competency model. And what this creates is really a tower of Babel. If you think of these processes and even the workforce plan, they're all trying to assess talent for their competencies, for their capabilities. If you have each of these disciplines speaking a different language, they can't cross, they can't share data between them. So talent acquisition might hire someone on one competency, but once they get here, learning and development will have to reassess them completely over again in order to determine when, how they need to develop them because they're not using the same competency model. So integrated talent management, especially with medium to large size companies, really needs a common set of competencies, a common language across the enterprise to make sure that we're um, speaking the same language in all of these evaluative disciplines. Um, also for larger companies, technology is important. Um, all of this integration and transfer of strategy from the corporate strategy to the talent strategy to the processes um, is much easier to do with technology. It's much more scalable that way. You can do it without technology through in-person meetings and other uh, uh, more manual methods, but once you hit a certain size, you're not going to be able to be as effective unless you ha are enabled by an integrated technology. And finally, change management is a key of integrated talent management. Um, you need to constantly increase awareness, acceptance, and adoption of this kind of model because this strategic integrated talent management model is very different than how many companies are doing it. So a dedicated and focused effort on change management is what you need to make this successful. Now, let's talk about this integrated talent management model and what, what the part of it that's talent strategy alignment. 
So if you look at this diagram, the talent strategy alignment piece is really about translating corporate strategy into talent strategy. So this really focuses on the very top of this house. So here's another diagram explaining how talent strategy alignment works. So with talent strategy alignment, we're going to assume that a company, in this case, com the Acme company, has eight corporate strategic initiatives for the next three to five years, and we'll call them B1 through B8. In performing talent strategy alignment as an HR function, the first thing you need to do, or as a talent acquisition function, the first thing you need to do is understand these business strategies and goals. Um, you may be surprised at how many companies have HR leadership teams that really don't have a good grasp of what the business is trying to accomplish. Going back to all those prior slides with the diagrams on them, an HR function can provide maximum value to the business when they are business partners that understand what the business is trying to do and are able to, to make the business not have to worry about the talent required to meet those goals. So once you discuss those business strategies, you look at each business strategy one at a time and you identify the talent implications for each business goal. So as we discussed earlier, if B3 is to expand into China, TI1, talent implication one, could be strategic targeted China leadership development program. TI2 is uh, expatriation programs to China. TI3 is labor market research in China. Um, so it's really looking at each business strategy and saying, if that's the strategy, here are the talent implications of each of those strategies. Once you do that, you say, okay, for talent strategy, talent implication number one, which are the talent management disciplines that have an impact on that talent implication? So in the case of that leadership development program, that's most likely going to be L&D and learning and development. When you look at TI2 or TI3 of talent acquisition doing labor market research, that's